So when I went for youth service, I made up my mind before I departed for you for Kano. That I will pray the way I've never prayed before. I will fast the way I've never fasted. And I will give the way I've never given. That was my result. In order to help me keep my vow, when I got to camp, they stole my meal ticket. So the possibility of going back on my promise did not exist because the options were not many. May your meal ticket be. <coughs> they stole my meal ticket the first night upon my arrival at the camp. So my fasting started almost immediately. Those were the days where we only had batch A and batch B. Batch A will come to camp in January and batch B will come to camp in July. So we came to camp in January. The temperature of Kano that year was 11 degrees in the night. Now, do you know what it, look, it feels like? You want to begin a prayer adventure and then the temperature now drops to 11 degrees. The meaning of 11 degrees is that it's very convenient for sleeping. If you don't have something that is more than a New Year resolution, the circumstances will make you not to be able to fulfill your vow. So I began to push in prayer. I began to push in fasting. I began to push. Those were the days when camp was 30 days. And after 30 days, we were released. I got to the place where my accommodation was and I continued in my prayer and fasting. The place was conducive. I found a, 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 a hill. That is where I used to climb for my prayer. So when I come back from work, sometimes I come back from work by five. I climb the mountain. I come back the, from the mountain by 11, sometimes 12 midnight, some other times. And I maintained it on a daily basis. So I was praying for January, prayed February, prayed March, prayed April, prayed May, prayed June. In June, God now told me, it was very clear. He said, I can see you are praying. So I got angry. I said, I've been praying since January. What you are, what, what is the meaning of that thing you came to? You know why? I was not trained. You, the reason why God spoke to me and told me those words that we may consider not to be important is because he had already scheduled the day of the appointment. And the way I was going, Satan was beginning to weary my heart because God seemed not to be responding. So in order not to allow Satan succeed with his mind bending, God said, I see you are praying. The meaning is, you have not reached the day of the appointment. Continue doing what you are doing. When the day of the appointment reaches, you will have your encounter. That was a prayer I did that I counted how many days I fasted. So it took 264 days before God encountered me. I will not be here today preaching to you if I didn't have that account. 264th day, I finished from my prayer on the mountain, came back into the room because the prayer started becoming so intense that when I come from work with my tie, if I'm late, I, 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 don't, I don't drop it. I take the tie to the mountain. So I came back from the mountain with my tie on, entered into the room to remove my tie. It was 12 midnight. Right? That was when I ran into four angels in my life. The suspended time, this thing you call time, was suspended. I was going into the past and into the future. They were taking me into the past and into the future. Into the past and into the future. They left me by 3 a.m. in the morning. What I'm telling you is on the 20th of October, 20. 2001 20th of October 2001 21st of October 2001 I came again dropped my things began to pray in tongues in the room this time now I, 
to go to the mountain. I've, I've not gone. I, I came to the room, changed to go to the mountain. Then they stopped me. I was in that room until 3 a.m. in the morning, from 6 p.m. in the evening. It was in that second encounter that I knew that the place of my primary assignment was the city of Makot. Are you there? That's how divine direction came to me. When you start, you start with a vow. If you continue, you will hit an encounter of your appointment. The day you hit the encounter of the appointment, the second point I want to raise starts. It is the supervising spirit of your altar that comes to visit you. He doesn't come as a friend. doesn't come as, as, as an acquaintance. He comes as a king. He comes to prescribe. He comes to give you direction. He opens your eyes to see that you are off track. Either. So the human attendant must commence his assignment of priesthood with a solemn vow. This flame that I've kindled now, it will never go out. Go and study the temple. You will see a flame there that they, they commanded the priest that this flame should not go out. Priesthood is a lifetime thing. It's not eat and run. If you are not ready to begin, no problem. Go become a nominal Christian. But the day you get ready, just know that this fire that I'm kindling now, I will kindle it for life. If you are not ready for that challenge, don't worry. It's not for everybody. 264 days before God came. Sorry, it's not God that came. It's angels that came. When I started encountering angels, I was so happy because my power ministry now started at that point. I preached for five years with power before it occurred to me that it was not angels I was praying to encounter. It was Jehovah I was praying to encounter. So I repented. Are you there? And came back. You will encounter many things when you begin to do your if prosperity can even fall upon you suddenly and because of that prosperity you'll be going to port Harcourt bringing goods going to port Harcourt bringing goods going to lagos you put goods in 911 you'll do that for 11 years then you'll remember ah uh ah -uh, it was not goods that i was looking for when i started my own was the angels began to minister to me and i started power ministry that's where that sensitivity to know if an angel is in the room is that time that i got it when demons are working out, I will know, I will know, I will know, I will know it. I will know the gift of discernment of spirit. Among all the prophetic gifts, the strongest of my life is discernment. I do business with invisible beings. If I, I know the song to sing for them to come, I know, I know the song. If here, I can sing that song. If I sing it and continue singing, it, it may not make sense to you, they will come here. No man taught me this. I learned it by. There are lessons that you will learn by encounter. 